So I've been using Photoshop for a pretty long time, and I will be the first to admit that it's not the easiest program to just jump right into. It can be pretty cumbersome. There's a lot that can be very overwhelming. So I just wanted to put together this little video that just goes over maybe like my top five adjustments that I kind of do for my workflow in Photoshop that make it a little easier to work with this huge program. The first thing I like to get rid of is the application frame. It basically makes Photoshop contained inside of this little window. I can't stand it. It just makes it a little harder for me to work with just because I like to use the tools that allow me to move the canvas around. In this, it just really doesn't allow me to do it. So one of the first things I drop is I actually go up to window and I turn off the application frame. This just makes it so that the window is kind of free floating. You can still get to your desktop pretty easily once you're in full view. And that's generally the way I work in most of my pieces. So application frame is the first thing I drop. The next thing I like to do is open the navigator. The navigator is one of these tools that's nice to have open all the time. If I'm super zoomed in here to this degree, I can still see the full image in the navigator, which is great because you don't want to get too focused on a single spot without being able to see a big view of your piece. You can turn on the navigator just by going to window and then it's right here, navigator turns it on and off. I like to leave that on. So now that the application frame is gone, navigator's turned on, I like to work in what's called uh, full screen mode and that's just by hitting F and that just takes that to the full screen mode. And the reason I like working this way is because if you use the space bar, you can actually drag the canvas all around inside of this space. It just makes it easier for me to get at certain angles when I can move it around this way, which brings me to my next thing, which is to zoom in and out of your actual piece. You can use the, um, okay, and you'll have to forgive me here. I'm on a Mac, so some of these shortcuts are gonna be a little different on PC. Whenever I say, command, it's probably going to be control on the PC. So going forward, just kind of keep that in mind. But for me, it's going to be command plus to zoom in and command minus to zoom out. And this is just an easy way to step in and out of the piece without having to go to the magnifying tool to drag in and out. But if you do want to use that, it is a fast way to do it. The next thing I use a lot in Photoshop is the rotate tool. Rotate just allows you to spin the canvas around. And again, this is just so I can come at certain angles a lot easier while I'm using the tool. Instead of kind of bringing my arm all around, I'll just rotate the canvas. If you hold R down, it will actually just hold the rotate tool in active mode. And then you can go ahead and spin it to whatever direction you want it. The compass just points up, meaning that that's the top of the canvas. But once you have it in the direction that you like, you can just let go of R and it brings you back to the tool that you were actively on. If you want to get out of the rotation, all you have to do is hit escape and that'll just bring you back to the proper orientation. So the next shortcut that's really good to know for Photoshop is the brush shortcut, which is B, B just for brush. Once you're in the brush mode, the next best shortcut is to make the size go up and down, and that's using the bracket tools. It's the right bracket, or I guess the one that goes this way uh, to make it bigger and the other one to make it smaller. However, I kind of like keeping my hand on the left side of the keyboard. So basically over ASD. When I have to go to the bracket keys, it kind of puts me outside of that. So what I do is I've mapped the size up and down to A and S. So S for going up and A going down. That way I don't have to move my hand around too much on the keyboard. You can reassign your keyboard shortcuts by going to edit and then you wanna go down to keyboard shortcuts and the ones for brush, they're gonna be under the tools menu. Once you're in tools, you can go down and find the size up and down brushes. What you see here is increase brush size is for me S and decrease brush size is A. And again, that's just so I don't have to move my hand all over the keyboard. Some other really great shortcuts to know by heart are pretty easy because Photoshop kind of names everything after the first letter of the actual thing. So lasso tool is L. That'll bring up the lasso tool, which of course will allow you to grab parts of your drawing. Let's say if I wanted to lasso the nose here, I can do that and then just paint on that layer or move it around. The way you get out of most tools is to hit Command D or Control D. This will just turn it off, just deselect basically what you just grabbed. Photoshop also has a really great tool called the Magic Wand tool. For this one, the shortcut is W. Uh, Magic Wand M is just because they used M for marquee, whatever. Magic Wand is W and Magic Wand will basically make a selection 
based on basically like colors. So if I use the magic wand here, it'll pick everything that's kind of in that sort of range for that color. And of course, if I hold shift, this is really nice because then I can add to that range. Like maybe I want to grab the entire region here and I can basically add to all of that using the magic wand tool. Of course, if you want to get out, it's also command D just to deselect. The next tool I use a lot is the move tool. And for this one, again, they didn't use M, they use V. V will bring you to the move tool and all that will help you do is move elements around on the canvas one at a time. And of course the last tool, which actually does use the M, is the marquee tool. Marquee just brings up the ability to make a box and this will grab any active thing on that layer. So right here, I just kind of grabbed it sort of whatever and then I can move whatever was inside of that box on that layer. The next thing I wanna cover is layers and layer management. Layers are very overwhelming and they can get out of control pretty fast. So the default view for Photoshop for layers is to basically clip the layer to just the entire thing. So the entire layer is represented in this thumbnail, which can be really difficult because for example, Stitch I can see in that, that thumbnail pretty well, but I can't really see the ducklings or the water drops or these drops or the signature because they're literally tiny. So one of the first things I like to do in the layer palette is just to go and right click it anywhere that's outside of a layer. And then I want, instead of doing the document bound, I want to do the one that's to the layer bound. And all this really means is that instead of the entire layer, what you'll see is what's actually on the layer. So if I say layer bounds, then it basically shows me anything that's just on that layer. So for Stitch, it's showing me that everything that's on there is just a stitch. Now, if I add to that layer, if I make a little mark over here, it will include that little mark. So it will just show you everything that's literally on the layer, but it is very useful for being able to see what's actually on the layer. And also, if you really wanna see what's on the layer, you can make these bigger. So right click again, Right now I have very small thumbnails. You can make them large thumbnails and you can really, really see what's on them. And that way you're not kind of hunting around for everything. Now that you can actually see the layers, sometimes you might just have so many of them that it's kind of hard to just kind of scroll through and try to figure out how to get to the active layer. If I'm on this active layer and I want to get to another one really quickly, the way I do it is I use the move tool. So again, this is V and you hit command or control. Let's say I want to be actively on the duckling layer. I just hit that layer while holding command and that will actively switch the layer actively from stitch to the ducklings. And I can go back the other way by just holding down command again and then clicking on stitch. Really useful if you want to move around really quickly in the canvas and you just don't want to actually go to the layer palette to pick something out. It's pretty easy to duplicate the layer just by holding alt and dragging the layer. This can be really useful if you're doing things like drawing a rock and then you need to make another rock really quickly. You can just duplicate it many times in place without having to go back to the layer. Another useful tool is to quickly merge layers. You can just hit Command and E. This will start to drop the layers from the top to whatever's below it. And of course, if you want to merge layers very quickly, you can highlight them by holding the Shift key, going to as many layers as you want to, and then you can hit Command E and that will just smash them all down all at once. There are other things that you can do in Photoshop to sort of manage your layers. There are ways to put them into folders. So I can grab maybe all of these effects and then put them down into a folder and that will put them all in a group. And I'll say those are all the effects layers in this drawing. That way you can kind of just not have so many overwhelming layers and kind of keep things grouped by similar items. The next thing I wanna cover are some helpful shortcuts that you can use while you're drawing. The first one is actually how to draw straight lines like you just have Photoshop draw a straight line for you. The way you want to make straight lines in Photoshop is to hold shift and if you're on a tool like brush tool while holding shift it will make a straight line. Of course you can also make a straight line going from the left to right or right to left but for any other direction you're actually going to want to rotate the canvas. So if I rotate the canvas again I can hold shift and make a straight line in whatever direction that the canvas is being rotated in. I know this is really wonky, but it's one of the ways that you can do it. Another really useful thing is flipping the canvas very quickly so you can basically see your drawing from the left and right. This is often a way to discover ways that it might be a little off. However, Photoshop does not have this built in to the program, so you have to create a keyboard shortcut. I use Command Q because Command Q basically would close the entire application, which I find useful never. So I've just basically made that my quick flip. Just make sure you're going to the keyboard, shortcuts and menus. Make sure you're in application menus. Then you're gonna go to image, scroll down. And here we go, 
flip canvas horizontal and make sure you have that to whatever you want. That way I can quickly flip the canvas and see what it looks like from the other side. Okay, here's another really good one for the lasso tool. You can use the lasso tool to lasso parts of the drawing. The shift key will allow you to add to the selection. So maybe I want both eyes also in that selection. Oh, but oh no, I kind of did not do that well. So, so you can actually decrease from the selection as well. And this is holding alt and this will actually subtract from the selection. This is a really useful way to make sure you can build up a selection without having to redo it over and over again. So another really useful tool is called content aware scaling. And this is really great if you want to make textures. So that repeat maybe like rocks or wood grain walls, like mortar, stuff like that. Here I have the example of a wood grain texture. What I want to do is bring up the crop tool and that's by hitting C and that brings up this selection here. When we usually do cropping, we think, oh, it crops inwards. Rather, what we want to do here is crop outwards. Make sure that content aware is turned on. Normally it's turned off. Go ahead and turn that on. And we're going to scale this outwards. And what this is going to do when we hit enter is Photoshop is going to do its best to try to fill in all the missing information with what it sees in the original image. It did a pretty good job. Usually it's about this good, but it's really, really great. Like I said, if you're trying to fill in a lot of texture really, really quickly, whether or not it's your, what you're drawing or if you're using a stock photo, but this is the result you get and it's really useful for that. Okay, so now I wanna cover a couple of things that are random problems that you probably encounter in Photoshop that I know that I've had to go and Google what, why does this happen? And it's always been infuriating when I realize the problem is so simple to fix. The first one is the guides that I sometimes use in Photoshop. They'll make my brush go crazy when I get near them and it's because of a snapping issue. So here you have a guide that I put into here and this could be for any reason. Maybe I just want the canvas to always be this small on this side. And what happens when I draw is as I come towards that guide is like, whoops, I'm snapping to it now. And this creates a very ugly line. You can turn this off very fast by going to view, and then making sure that it does not snap to the guides. Now, if I try to redo that line, I won't have that snapping problem. Of course, you can always do this if you don't need to see the guide by hitting Command H, that just turns the guide off and whether or not you have snapping turned on, it won't matter, you'll still be able to make a smooth line. One of the other issues that I run into so often with Photoshop is that I will accidentally put it into what's called precision mode. And so if I'm in my brush, you can see here that I can see what brush I'm on. It has the shape of the brush there, which is what I want always. But every once in a while, I will just randomly hit the caps lock button. And this puts Photoshop into what's known as precision mode. And it turns the brush preview into this. And I can't stand it. And I almost always do it by accident. If you find that your brush suddenly turned into this, that's why. Go ahead and look at your keyboard and make sure the caps lock button is not turned on. So another thing that frustrates me a lot that I encounter randomly all the time is I can't do anything. I'm trying to make a brush here, nothing's working, I can't seem to do anything. And that's because I have inadvertently made a very, very tiny selection somewhere on the canvas. Here I just did it for demonstration purposes, but it's in the corner and I didn't see it. If you ever find yourself not being able to make a mark on the canvas, it's very possible you accidentally made a tiny, tiny one pixel selection. And of course, the first solution is always to hit Command D, which does a deselect, and then you'll see that I can now make the line on the canvas. But it's one of those random problems that every once in a while you'll encounter. Just make it a habit to hit Command D just to make sure you haven't selected something. Okay, so the last thing I wanna cover is a question I get a lot about my art process and that's how do I blend the colors? And this kind of is the culmination of all the stuff that I just went over. So the way that I blend is not by using the blur tool or anything like that. I actually blend by using a lot of shortcuts. Let's say that I'm gonna blend a little section over here. I'll take a blue and then maybe I'll take this pink here. I'm taking selections by holding the Alt tool. While you hold it, it will bring up this little eyedropper and it's only temporary. So it's only active while you're holding Alt, which is great because as soon as you let go, it goes back to the brush tool. And that's why I can eyedropper so fast. So if I eyedropper here, let go, it's now on that blue color. But if I eyedropper, let's say here on the duckling, it goes right to that color. And as soon as I let go, it gives me that new color. So that helps me basically blend colors very quickly. So let's do that here. I'll eyedropper this blue 
and very lightly with a very, very light touch because my pen pressure sets the opacity for my color. If I go between these two, you can see that I'm kind of making this very, very soft color appear between them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to eyedropper the color that's between them, the new one that I just made, and then I can kind of quickly blend them by just quickly going between the eyedropper and brush tool and using a very light pen pressure. And that's how I blend my colors. It's just that quick eyedropper tool and making that selection as I go across. What I find that I like about it is that it leaves the texture. If you do use smudge, it sometimes kind of blurs all of it together, but I do like having the texture of my scratch brush in a lot of my blending, so that's why I do that. Okay, so those were my top five adjustments you can make to Photoshop to make it a little more bearable and less of a monster. Again, I know that it's really daunting to get into a new program and Photoshop wasn't really intended to be a painting tool. So a lot of these things are kind of hidden and not so obvious. And so after a lot of time of using the tool, I've just kind of found my way through it and found what adjustments really, really are necessary for me and my workflow. So I hope this was useful for you and we'll see you in the next video.